Okay, if you're like me and you've traded, purchased, sold, swapped JPEGs that are called NFTs, some of you might be in for a rude surprise. A lot of folks don't realize that NFTs and the profits that you make on NFTs are taxable. And a lot of folks are like, holy crap, you mean this ape that I've purchased and sold, there's a tax implication involved with it? There sure is. What I wanted to do today is just talk about how NFTs are taxed and how to prepare yourself when it comes to tax season as an NFT flipper or a degenerate like myself. I get it, I've been in this space for a while and I have hundreds of JPEGs and uh, you know, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions when it comes to the taxation of how NFTs work. So let's talk about that in this video. Stay tuned and I'll share all of my tips and all the tricks around it. How's it going? My name is Eric and I am a tax and accounting professional as well as a NFT degen. I've been trading, buying, selling, swapping NFTs since last year and I've really enjoyed this space. But what I've come to realize is there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to the taxation of it. You see posts all the time of like NFT influence saying, shoot me, I'm just gonna go to jail because I don't understand a tax thing. And a lot of tax professionals in the world don't really fully get the space yet because it's so new. So I wanted to just talk about some common sense things when it comes to how to report, how to track these things and how NFTs are taxed. But before we get started, I would absolutely love it if you hit the like and subscribe button if you're new here. We make videos on a weekly basis in all in terms of cryptocurrency and NFTs and entrepreneurship. So I'd love to have you join us in this journey. But what we're gonna do now is talk about the basics and the fundamentals of the taxation of NFTs. So let's go over to the whiteboard and get started. Okay, so let's talk about how NFTs are taxed. And a lot of us are probably thinking, or a lot of y'all out there might be thinking, okay, I'm buying and selling JPEGs how is this even calculated or taxed? So there's four different ways of how to make money in the NFT space. So just make sure we're on the same page. Buy, selling, and trading. Yes, even trading your NFTs can trigger a taxable implication. Airdrops, staking rewards, or token yield. Let's say if you're in CyberKongs, CyberKongs Genesis, and you're paid out in banana token, that token yield is a taxable implication. And finally, play to earn, like Axie Infinity, can trigger taxable implications. So let's break it down. Let's first talk about buy, sell, and trade. Because one of the most popular things to do in the NFT space is to trade up. You start with maybe 0.05 ETH, and I've seen people trade up all the way to getting a mutant or even a bored ape, but not realizing that every single transaction is triggering a taxable implication, even if you don't cash out or put that money back in your pocket. So keep this in mind. So let's first talk about how capital gains work. NFTs are treated as property, similar to like similar to stocks and bonds with a caveat. Long-term gains could be taxed as collectibles, which can trigger a much higher tax rate. But let's talk about capital gains first. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to know in the NFT space is, am I holding on to this asset for a short-term period of time before I sell it or trade it, or a long-term period of time? Now, the benefits of looking at it as short or long-term is typically in most assets, if you hold it on for a longer period of time, you get a lower tax rate. But in NFTs, not necessarily. Let's talk about that. Short-term gain basically means you're holding onto an asset for less than a year. Let's say, for example, you bought a cool cat in June and he sold it in September, for example, less than two months. That's a short-term gain. You're gonna pay up to 37% on that net profit. So just to make sure we're clear, you're only paying tax on the profit. Let's say, for example, you bought a cool cat for five ETH and then you sold it for 10 ETH. The first five, your contribution, your basis is non-taxable because you already pay tax to get that money. The net profit, that five ETH of profit, that's what's being taxed. And that's what's gonna be taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. So if you're a lower of income, you might be paying a lower tax. If you're a higher income, you're paying a higher tax. That's how it works, that you pay it on the tax. I mean, you pay it on the gains. A lot of folks also ask, Eric, I paid a lot of gas fees. Are these deductible? Yes, gas fees add to your basis or your purchase price of the asset and also reduce your sale price of the asset. So gas fees should be included in your calculations for your net profit. Now, if you held it for a long-term period, meaning over a year and a day, meaning let's say I bought an asset January 1st of 2021, I would have to sell it January 2nd of 2022. 
If I hold it for a long term, traditionally they have it what they call a long term capital gain of zero, 15 or 20 percent, which most people are going to fall in the zero or 15 percent range, which typically incentivizes you for holding on to an NFT or an asset for longer. Now, here's the caveat. NFTs could be treated as if they're art or a collectible, which triggers a different collectible tax for long term capital gains. Now, this is not fully specified or dictated by the IRS as of yet, but based on IRS classifications of collectible, NFTs and most NFTs fall into this space. So you're going to want to talk to your individual tax advisor on this particular situation. Now, if they were to fall into the collectible status, the collectible tax rate is 25% regardless of your income. So even if you would have fallen in a zero or 15% income tax bracket for long-term capital gains, because it's collectible, you're automatically going to pay a higher tax. The only time this benefits you actually doesn't benefit you at all. Even if you were in a high tax bracket, it would still be higher than what you'd pay in a long-term capital gain rate. So keep that in mind. There is not this full on clarity yet when it comes to how NFTs are taxed on a long-term basis. And what that means is there's still no current guidance or specificity from the IRS of if NFTs are going to be treated as a collectible. But from what I've seen and what I've experienced as a collector, I'm probably leaning towards the fact that long-term gains are treated as collectibles just to be you know, clear on that. Now remember, you're taxed only on the profit. If there's any losses on it, let's say you bought into a rug pull. Man, I there's one time where I bought or, or I minted three different projects in a week and all three of them were rug pulls. Rug pulls basically mean you mint it, you put money into it, and it immediately goes worthless because the founders disappeared with the money and it goes to zero. Well, those capital losses can be de deducted against your capital gains. So Keep track of all your rug pulls because they could come back and help you as a tax deduction. Now remember, I need to reinforce that you're taxed even if you don't cash out. Even if you don't pull the money into your Coinbase and cash out into your bank account, each transaction triggers a tax. So let's kind of break it down. The typical workflow when you're looking at buying NFTs is you buy Ethereum, then you mint the NFT, then you sell or trade the NFT, and then you get the Ethereum, you're like, I'm gonna put it in my bank account. You sell the ETH back to cash. Each transaction triggers a tax tracking mechanism. Step number one, if you're buying Ethereum, now you have a basis in the Ethereum. When you mint the NFT, that transaction right here is gonna trigger a possible tax implication. If you bought ETH at $3,000, and then when you minted the NFT, Ethereum now is $3,500, you're gonna have a capital gain on that Ethereum transaction, right? And now you mint the NFT and you have a basis in your NFT. When you sell the NFT, there's a taxable implication there too, either a capital gain or capital loss. And that puts Ethereum back in your pocket. Let's say the Ethereum at this point is now $3,600. And then you let it sit in your MetaMask wallet. Now you're like, hey, I should cash out because I wanna pay my rent or I wanna pay my bills. So then you sell the Ethereum, and let's say the Ethereum now is at 3,300, because we all know Ethereum is relatively volatile. This will trigger a capital loss. But what you're seeing is each NFT transaction could have multiple taxable events inside of it. And this is why NFT taxation is on a level more complex than traditional cryptocurrency. I know, this sounds hairy, sounds complicated. Doesn't have to be, but there's a lot of pieces to keep in mind. So now let's just break down the three other ways of making money in the NFT space and just talk about how they can be taxed. So let's talk about airdrops, right? So I'm a holder in a project called World of Women and over the year I received three different airdrops, three different art pieces. The challenge is there's a value associated with that airdrop. There's a market value associated with it and that is considered to be taxable income to me. So an airdrop will trigger what we call ordinary income. It will be either ordinary or miscellaneous income that's taxed at your ordinary income tax bracket, right? So that's something that you need to consider. You have this new asset that showed up in your OpenSea. You're like, what is this? Oh, it was an airdrop from this project I had. Cool Cats, they had a Halloween thing. They had a Christmas thing. They airdropped us assets that has a value associated with it, and those are taxable income. Some of you might be in the staking rewards or token yield. There was a big phase in 2021 where crypto or NFT gaming was all the rage. And this is not like games like you're playing like Call of Duty. The games really were you're staking your asset like Mutant Cats or Wolf Game or something like that. You're staking your asset and they're paying you a reward in a different token. Wolf Game, for example, paid out Wool Token, right? And different other ones 
like these Genesis apes pay out in banana token. These are paying you a yield. These are paying you a token and the token is going to be taxed as ordinary income. So again, there's a lot of moving pieces to NFTs that a lot of folks aren't considering. How do you even explain this to your tax advisor? Okay, I bought the Cyber Kong and this, this picture of a monkey is paying me a banana token and I'm earning all these banana tokens right now. Can you imagine like the average tax preparer is sitting here thinking, okay, this guy's a picture of an ape that's paying him a bananas. What is, what, I don't even know what this means, right? The reality is each transaction that happens, anything that gets paid out or spilled out can trigger a taxable implication. When you re receive staking rewards or token yield from the projects that you're in, Cool Cats is dropping milk token, right? Board Ape Yacht Club is dropping their ape token. A lot of these companies are dropping their token and you go and you claim these tokens when you claim these tokens, it's taxed as ordinary income. The value of the token at the time of receipt is taxed as ordinary income, and now you have a basis in the token that, if you choose to sell it, could have a capital gain or capital loss. So every token that you receive from a project has two taxable implications. The receipt of that in taxable income as ordinary income and the sale of that asset as a capital gain or a capital loss. And the last thing is play to earn. There may be more in the in the, the months to come in the NFT space, just like in the crypto space. Things are evolving so quickly. There's so many new things happening that my video could be out of date in a week. But the fourth one that a lot of folks love talking about is play to earn or P2E. And the most common example is Axie Infinity. And the whole idea of Axie Infinity is you're playing a game and then Axie Infinity is rewarding you with something. That could be treated as self-employment income as a business. I have a lot of friends that are also running Axie Infinity scholarships where they're lending out their assets from Axie Infinity to players in different countries to play the game and then the reward that gets paid out, everyone splits it. Self-employment income has a couple of caveats to it. On top of the ordinary income side where you're paying up 37%, self-employment income is also subject to self-employment tax, which is another 15.3%. And you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, Eric, there's way too many things happening right now. How's the IRS gonna know that with all my JPEGs, that I'm making this money and I gotta pay all this tax, maybe I'm just gonna forget about it. And I just wanna urge you and remind you that every transaction that happens on the blockchain is fully transparent. It's a public ledger, it's immutable. You're gonna to wanna to report to the best of your ability the tax liability side of your NFT transactions, right? Each of these has a tax implication, buy, selling, and even trading, even if you didn't cash out, airdrops, that treat as ordinary income. Staking rewards, receiving banana token, for example, or ape token, or, or uh, like I'm a holder in NFT worlds and we received two drops this year for a world token and each one of them triggers a tax implication. And play to earn can also trigger self-employment. Now, NFT taxation doesn't have to be complicated. There's a lot of tools that can be used to help you keep track of these things because again, there's a lot of complexity here, more so than cryptocurrency. So hopefully I was able to explain to you the different ways that you could make money in the NFT space, which is great. Yeah, everyone wants to make money, but also the four different categories and how it is taxed. Okay, so as you've clearly seen, NFT taxation could be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. There's a couple of things that you need to look out for, and as long as you have a fundamental understanding of how it works, it's relatively straightforward. And you might be able to even explain this to your CPA or your accountant, or even do it on your own on TurboTax. Now, I know you might have some questions or your friends might have some questions when it comes to taxation of NFTs. If that's the case, drop your questions in the comment section below. I'd be happy to explain them or answer them for you. Also, we make new videos here on a weekly basis when it comes to crypto, NFTs, entrepreneurship, and all things life in general. I would love to have you join us on this journey. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that said, have an amazing day. We'll chat soon. Peace.